All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this Asus Tough 506, right? So I was told it was having some fan noise issue, but they just wanted to clean out the dust and see if it will help. Um, the model is TUF506IV-AS76. All right, so we're gonna first use a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver and remove all the screws from the bottom. So, you want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put the screw flat side down like this on my desk in the pattern that I remove them. All right, so I like to usually just go in rows. So if there's no complex pattern, I will just go by rows. It looks like there's three rows. All right, so let's go ahead and remove all these screws. And if this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices. If it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, again, you want to keep all the screws in order because they are different size, shape, size, shape, and lengths. These two actually are longer than these two. So if you mix them up, you can damage your computer. In some cases, you can just um, deform the plastic. In other cases, you can actually... Um, damage it electronically and then the computer might not work anymore so keep that in mind all right so we got four more screws down here looks like the four down here are the shortest of all the rest these three seem to be the same size as those but again it's always a good idea to keep them in order actually these two middle ones seem to be the same length as the rest over here as well so it's just these bottom corner ones that are shorter Right again, it's always a good idea to keep them in order anyways, even if they look the same. I don't know why this screw was already out and it's a little bit stripped, but it seems like it's popping out okay. So we're gonna pop this open. It looks like there's somewhat of a gap here. I don't know if that's because the customer opened it in the past, um, but you can see here, there's a gap. This screw actually seems to stay in place. I have a feeling there's a little washer that holds this screw in and that helps pop this up slightly so that you can get like a starting um, spot to kind of pop the cover off. So we're gonna get in there. I'm just using my fingernails. You can use plastic pry tools if you want. And let's see if we can pop this out. Okay, so it doesn't pop out this way. So I have a feeling we're gonna have to pop the cover off this way. Let's go ahead and see. I'm gonna open this slightly here. We're gonna go around this edge and I'm pushing with my thumb here while I pull with my fingernails here. Oh, and yes, it comes out very easily this way. So we're gonna work our way over, all right? So we got that, we're gonna just continue working our way. You don't wanna push on the trackpad, so we're gonna skip over the trackpad and go over to the side here and just continue popping it up and you can see it pops out pretty nicely, okay? Here you can see the clip design, all right? So basically the plastic on here kind of curves and then grips into this here. It's very um, dusty, crumbs everywhere in here, crummy, I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, it's pretty dirty in there, so yeah. Alright, so we're going to continue pulling this cover up, and I'm going to just get my fingernail and slot it in there as I pull. As you can see, it pops up pretty easily. We're going to turn this around and do the same thing with this side. So again, you can just use a plastic tool sliding it through here as you kind of pull the cover up. All right, there we go. So now we got the sides and the front up. You can see it wobbles pretty easily. And now we gotta get the back side out. So we're gonna just run our fingernail or whatever tool you wanna use around the back here. Okay, so that kind of popped out already. We're gonna go around to this side. Same thing, I'm kind of pulling with this. I'm pushing on this part of the hinge here so that I can pull the thing apart. And here you go, it pops out pretty easily. Um, usually you'll want to kind of have this laying down here um, so that way you don't drop it or you can have the screen open slightly to make it easier. So now that we kind of got this area and the rest out, the middle's kind of stuck. Let's see if we can kind of lift it and wiggle it and sometimes that'll pop it out. No? Okay, so I guess we're going to have to use a little more force here. So you got to get into this little groove it seems and then just kind of pry that. All right, my fingernail, I kind of cut it a little short, but there we go, this one's better. See, that's why I don't cut my fingernail short. This slight difference, as you can see, makes a big difference in terms of being able to pry this stuff open. So here we can see, we got the bottom cover off. There's quite a bit of crumbs and stuff in here, as you can see. All right, so we're gonna be cleaning that out. 
the fans are somewhat dusty um, this fan is getting kind of stuck and there's like things of like dust coming out so maybe that's what's stopping it from spinning properly um, I guess we'll find out so yeah this this fan is pretty bad that's the GPU this is the GPU fan it's getting stopped up pretty bad um, I'm gonna clean it out first and then I'll blow it with my uh, blower with this handheld blower to show you because I don't want to blow all the dust in my work area But um, that's what it looks like. All right. Let me do a quick zoom in just to show what's in here All right, if you're working on the computer and you don't know what you're doing or you're not very uh, If you're not too good and you're kind of somewhat clumsy You might want to disconnect the battery first the battery connectors right here You would grab the edges like this and then you kind of just wiggle this connector as you kind of pull it and there you go it pops out pretty easily and then to be safe after doing that you would open up the computer you want to be uh, open it slowly because each hinge is missing a screw and if you open it too quick um, you can actually break the hinge mount so we're going to slowly open this and then we're going to press and hold the power button here for about 15 seconds this will drain any residual um, power from the board and make it a lot safer to work on there is a lot of, there are a lot of crumbs and junk in the keyboard, so I'm going to have to blow that out as well, not just the, um, the fans themselves, but, uh, yeah. And then when closing it, it helps to kind of push on the hinges themselves, so that way it's not taking a bunch of force from the computer opening and closing. All right, let's get some of these crumbs off my desk now. Okay. All right. So we got the battery. Here, if you need to replace the battery, there's the model number. I don't know if you can see that. C41N1906-1. All right. Um, you can also search for the model of the laptop and battery on Amazon. If you can't find it, just let me know. I will send you a text, uh, or not a text. I will send you uh, a link to the um, battery that I find on Amazon. Okay, um, we got this speaker here the cable runs along underneath all the way to this speaker and plugs in up here same thing with the battery you just grab the wings and you kind of just wiggle this connector to pop it out it's not held in with screws it's just held in with these rubber pieces so you can actually lift this out it just has a little piece of plastic sticking out to hold it in place got the DC jack or charge port connector right here so this same thing you can kind of just wiggle the connector to pull it out if it's really hard to pull out, I sometimes will use a flathead screwdriver in this little raised plastic area to help push it while I'm kind of wiggling and pulling this. All right, if you need to replace the charge port though, you do have to take the screws out for the hinge and then pop it up slightly. Um, usually what I do is I open the laptop up slightly with my, like my hand under here, take the screws out, and then I'll drop the thing back down and the hinge will stay slightly up. Then you can get underneath and roll it back. Um, then you got the, excuse me, the DC, or sorry, the LCD, LVDS connector underneath this plastic. You can flip this little latch up and then you can pull this connector out. If you do that, make sure that you do disconnect the battery and press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds first. All right, you got the speaker connector right here underneath the speaker, of course. And these speakers are, or, sorry, the fan. Why am I saying speakers? Okay, so the fan connector here. Then if you want, you can remove these two screws and it looks like the fan will just come out. Um, I'm not gonna try and yank it out because I don't need to. Um, and then you got this fan here. There are three screws on this one though. Sorry, it's hard to kind of position this with it so zoomed in. And then the fan connector is right there. Um, underneath this plastic, you do have a M.2 SSD. Sorry, I didn't get good view of that. Um, I'm going to guess it's a PCIe NVMe. I don't think I should peel all of this out. Um, but this comes out like every other M.2 PCIe NVMe. One screw, it pops up slightly and you can pull it back. Um, and then we got the RAM here. There's two sticks. There's one stick here. All right. And you got another stick here. I'm only going to pull one out. You basically pull these tabs to the side away from the stick of RAM. And then the RAM will pop up slightly like this, and you can go ahead and remove it. Um, they don't have any labels on the RAM, so I can't tell you the speed of the RAM, but it is DDR4, or yeah, PC4, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you see this model here, B BKXB, I think that's the motherboard model number. 
Um, I don't know if there's anything on the other side. Let me actually remove the other stick of RAM just to see. Um, let me dust this off a little because it's kind of gross. Okay. So we'll get that out, click that back into place, and let's go ahead and remove the other stick of RAM. Okay, pops up like that. There's lots of crumbs all over this thing. <laughs> Same thing, there's no label here. Okay, but they do have a motherboard mo model number here, if you can read that. D-A-B-K-X-B-M-B-A-D-0, revision D. All right, we're gonna put this back in. Let's make sure there's no crumbs in there. All right, so this thing is pretty gross. There we go, we'll click this back in. Okay, you got the keyboard backlight connector cable here. There's a flip latch for that. There's a hard drive connector here, it looks like. Um, so I guess some models probably won't have as big of a battery. Um, let me actually zoom out. So I'm guessing some models won't have as big of a battery because I don't see where you would put a hard drive in here, but this says HDD on the label there. Um, and then you have another SSD slot here. I don't know why they call it SDD solid disk drive, I guess. Um, but there's also an M.2. Uh, I don't know if it supports PCIe, NVMe, or SATA, or both. Um, most likely it's a SATA, PCIe, NVMe, but um, I don't know. All right, uh, anything else? You got this one connector here. I'm going to guess this is for the power button. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't know unless I took the whole thing apart. Uh, you can also Google that to find out, but I think it's the power button. If I didn't mention it already, CPUs here, soldered to the motherboard, GPUs here, soldered to the motherboard. They have all these little um, thermal pads underneath this part for the GPU to help cool down like the memory and other things. Um, and then this USB port is a separate board. So if for some reason this USB port isn't working, you can replace that or and or this cable. Okay, keyboard connector is right here. Um, I'm going to guess, oh yeah, this is TP, so touchpad, all right, or trackpad, whatever you wanna call it. And that's pretty much all there is in here that I can see to explain. So yeah, I'm gonna clean the dust out and we'll be back, all right? So see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back, so here we go. Let me clean this off. All right, so there's no more crumbs. It does still have like little marks there. That's usually from like grease or something. I forgot to show the the little washer. Oh, I should have cleaned under there, but here's the washer there that holds that one screw I was referring to. All right, and then this stuff is kind of stuck. All right, so we got the dust out of here. Okay, so there used to be a whole bunch of dust back there. And the fans, as you can see, are a lot cleaner now. Um, but yeah, other than that, we're going to put this thing back together. Um, they do include a screw for the M.2 SSD, the extra slot. So if you wanted to add another SSD, keep that in mind. It's very simple. Excuse me. Just buy another M.2 SSD and put it in. It goes in slightly at an angle, and then it goes down, and you put the screw in. But um, other than that, that looks to be pretty much it. I do need to plug the battery back in. Oh, let's see if it makes a weird any noise. This fan is really hard to turn. So I think this fan is having some trouble spinning. This fan spins so much easier, which is surprising because... Usually the CPU fan goes bad before the GPU fan because the GPU fan um, usually isn't running all the time. The CPU fan is almost always running, but maybe they play a lot of games or do stuff that's very uh, GPU intensive. It does spin, but it does it gets stuck a bit. I'm kind of curious if the fan is easy to remove or not because... I have a feeling if this fan is bad, they're gonna wanna change it in the future. So let's try with the PH1 or JS1 screwdriver to just pop these screws out and see if the fan lifts up easily. All right, if you are gonna mess with these, you might want to disconnect the battery and press and hold the power button um, just in case so you don't touch the screws here and damage something, all right? But let's go ahead and see, huh, the fan it does seem like it does lift up here. I don't know if there's something... 
Oh, why'd they do that? <laughs> so there's a piece of plastic for the fan that goes underneath the heatsink here. So making it, um, I don't know if it's impossible to get this out. Eh, you can probably get it out. Let's try and undo the fan connector here. All right. Let's see if we can lift this fan out here. So the cable goes underneath this heat sink and it runs around. I don't know if you can see it. Runs around even underneath the SSD. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see it a little bit. So they made this fan to where I don't think you can remove it unless you take the heat sink out. That's a terrible design. All right, well, um, you maybe could. Uh, you would want to at least take any screws that are holding the motherboard down, like this one. Um, and then you can probably lift it up just enough. You'll probably want to disconnect this too. This might actually be for the LEDs, the lights for the uh, power and hard drive and stuff like that. But I think if you lift this up high enough, um, you could possibly slide this out underneath. I don't, well, I'm going to leave it in there because I don't want to mess around with it too much. They just asked me to clean out the dust. So we're going to leave that in there. All right, let's pinch the connector back into place. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah. The CPU one, they also have this plastic going underneath. So um, keep that in mind. These are going to be um, somewhat of a pain to remove. You'll possibly have to redo the thermal paste if you want to take the fans out. That's a very dumb design. I mean, I think they just designed it like that on purpose so that you can't upgrade it on your own. Anyways, let's go ahead and plug the battery back in. Let me center this. Maybe I'll use that as a screenshot or a thumbnail. All right, so we'll get this connector in. If you're replacing the battery, make sure you don't flip the battery connector upside down. The red pins are this way and the black wires are that way. All right, just in case you're wondering. And then make sure that you get it in um, straight. You don't want to get it at an angle. All right, just get that in and pinch that into place. All right, I think that should be good. All right, they actually put some marker there with blue so you can kind of see where it connects, though they should have put more blue onto the silver part so that you can see there's a tiny bit of blue there. All right, anyways, let's go ahead now and get the cover back on more time so I can get the thumbnail all right and let's go ahead and put this back on I don't see a bio CMOS or real-time clock RTC battery here um, it's possible there could be one underneath the motherboard but I don't see one so if after removing this the date and time is reset um, then most likely this can be uh, might be used for the BIOS battery as well all right so we're gonna just get this back together just line everything up click everything back into place. We're basically going to do the reverse of before. So the center part first, and then we're working our way over the sides and then just go around the edges, pushing it all back down. Good. And then we'll just tighten the screws back into place. So we'll get this corner screw back in. I don't know why this screw wasn't even tightened in when they brought it to me. It was already out. All right. And then let's get the rest of the screws in. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, um, again, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. These are customer computer repairs, so keep that in mind. I don't own these laptops, so by the time you see this video, I likely won't have it to be able to show anything else. And also, because they are customer computers, I can't just um, tear them down completely because there is a lot of risk involved. And if for some reason, um, like with this one where they just asked me to clean the fans, if it doesn't turn on or something, they might, um, they'll might they definitely blame me and say it was working before. So it's very um, important. I'm not allowed to just go and rip out uh, all the motherboards and everything from every computer I work on. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and finish getting this all back together. All right. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, last screw. All right.
Alright, let's drop this.